bam, we get going on the top today. First thing is to lay out the positioning of the tail vise in the proper plywood layers. Layers 3, 4, and 5 are especially important due to the tenons on the top of each leg that hold the top in place. Secondly, find out the results of a vise screw that gets in the way of my leg tenon and the resulting compromise that had to take place. Says who you need a handsaw. I really do need a handsaw for sure. I had a cheap hardened tooth carpenter saw, but half the teeth had broken off. Watch that fiasco take place. Then we finish up in this episode with the mounting nut mortise and the tail block to hold the vise screw in place. I have already laid out the top view of the tail vise location as soon as I cut the top strips. This is a Yoast vise screw that cost me less than $50 on Amazon. I have a link in the description. I bought two of them. One is for my leg vise and the other is for this tail vise that we will be working on today. This Yoast model is a bit heavy for a tail vise but I would rather err on the side of extra heavy duty on this bench. I need to mark out the entire side profile of my tail vise so I know where the parts are going to have to go in order to provide clearance for the main body of the screw, my sliding block that will hold my bench dog, as well as the pivot nut on the front end of the vise screw to keep it centered and in place. I took an air powered die grinder with a titanium coated bit to cut the threads out of an oversized nut. This allows the shaft of the vise screw to rotate on a central point without wallowing out the wood on the end. while laying out the lines of the tail vise. I just now realized that it interferes with the mortise that sticks up from my front leg. Why didn't you design this thing in SketchUp with every angle measurement and possibility in 3D wonderfulness, you ask? Well, I've tried to use SketchUp before, but the learning curve is quite steep, and I found manipulation of a single element and groups to be difficult to interact with and I just don't have the cycles to learn it to the point that the efficiency would be worth my enjoyment of doing things on the fly. Well, the solution that came to mind were threefold. One, I could cut off the end of my screw so that it was shorter. I came to realize that my range of movement would be limited by four inches. The screw shaft is 19 inches in total, and if I added up all my loss, my throw would result in four inches of movement. I really wanted to have the full length. The second solution was to just cut off the minimum clearance off my tenon on the leg. This would be a stepped mortise that after I drew it out and cut it off I realized that my dog block would still interfere with the full range. The third solution is the one I ended up going with. I reduced the mortise size to where it is cut off behind the pivot nut that would sit in a mortise at the end of my vise opening.
Now my layout is complete, and nothing should interfere. I need to cut my mortises to correspond with my leg tenons, but only on layers 3, 4, and 5. I was glad that I waited to cut those after I redid the layout of the tail vise on the side view. Everything looks great, and it locks in nicely and sits nice and flush. Now I need to cut out the end block pieces as well as my main space in which the dog block will ride. I will number them one through four so that I can keep my pieces in the same order. Once I have my end pieces, I need to cut a hole so that the screw shaft can be mounted through the center. Thank mm -hmm. you. 